Let's start with this. How are you doing? You're here in Indianapolis for Big Ten Media Days, but how are things going? Yeah, good. All of the medical part's been fine. The ticker's still ticking, so no, so far so good. I, I've had a good bill of, bill of health. What is uh, your outlook for this 2021 season? Obviously, we've come through the 2020 year, which, as we've heard over and over again, was a challenge for everybody. But oh, yeah. what, from your perspective, what's going to make this year uh, so much different, maybe more special for the kids, so on and so forth? Well, to me, it's pretty simple. I think James actually talked about it a little bit yesterday, was confidence. In this league and in, in sports in general, the higher you go up, the higher you go up the body. So you can win physically when you're in Little League and in high school stuff. You get to college, it's, it's, you start to have to use your brain a little bit more. You get to the NFL, you, you got to be you got to be dead on. And from the neck up, if you don't have the confidence to know that you can do it, or if you doubt yourself a little bit, it's hard to it's hard to succeed really. So what I saw last year in the beginning, they took a hit with their confidence. Mm -hmm. Once they got that first win, it kind of took off again. So my expectations are, uh, I have high expectations. I think, you know, it's a good staff. It's good. There are good players there. They'll have great opportunities. So it'll be up to them. And I just think uh, I'm looking forward to a lot of wins this year. What, from a conference perspective, what have you picked up out here over the last well, day and then a couple hours here so far? But what's the vibe you're getting from around the conference in terms of obviously Ohio State's the front runner? But it seems like a lot of these other programs, including Penn State, feel pretty good about where they're at. Well, I, here's what I think I think the Big Ten has done a great job of, of increasing the talent from the coaching side. I have seen Greg Schiano coming back in. Uh, you know, there's at Purdue, Jeff's done a phenomenal job. Uh, Tom Allen at Indiana. I mean, there's some really, really good coaches. And you get the coaches, you get the proper guys in the right spots, and so they have to recruit. Um, you're gonna have, you're gonna have great football, and and that's. I think the conference is in great shape right now. Then I kind of get that same feeling because everybody, everybody thinks, hey, if this works for us, you right. know, we could have a shot, and that's what you want. You don't want a team to walk in and go, man, we're going to stink this year. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes that happens. In terms of the film you watched of Penn State last year, are there any guys you saw who maybe under the radar or only played a little bit that you're excited to see more of this year? Has anyone come to mind? Uh, well, they had some young kids coming in, or pass rushers, mm -hmm. uh, which they're going to need because they lost some. Right. Um, the offensive line is always the place that you have to check. So the names... I wouldn't know. I watched some practice. You can see there's some kids who have some potential. Mm -hmm. But uh, if I had to pick one, it would be the outside backer. Smith? I think that kid's a stud. Yeah. I, I said that from the time he showed up. He he flashes. I, w I would love to see him be more consistent because I think he's capable. I th and I think he'll do that. In terms of Sean Clifford, what did you see from him last year that gives you positive feelings uh, going into this year. I mean, what, what things on tape did you see as areas where, you know what, if he does that over a 12-game season, Penn State can be in a better place than it was last year? Yeah, so to me, the quarterback spot, you have to know what you have in that spot. So he's he's not a runner, mm -hmm. but he can move. Um, for him, it's, more, it's to me, it's accuracy. So he just needs to be accurate with his balls, whether he's playing a short game or he's pushing the ball down the field to Dawson. That's what he's got to be able to do. Can he do that? Yeah, I think the last few games he, he showed that. Um, but his strength is not with his feet, although he can do that. He just, you'd want somebody a little more fleet of foot than that. Yeah. If you had NIL in your day, what would you want it to sign a deal with? Probably a porta potty company or something, you know. <laughs> that'd be good. That that would fit my style. <laughs> Bruce Clark would have probably had, you know, all the other stuff. So I'd have been, I'd have been down to the being the number one guy in the number two business. I think. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's perfect. <laughs> Last one, unless you have anything. What um, what do you think a full Beaver Stadium will mean, not just to the team, but to the fan base, oh, the huge. alumni this fall? Yeah, it's huge. You know, so the one thing you can't, I'll never forget this. This is before Beaver Stadium was Beaver Stadium the way it is now. Mm -hmm. I think we had like 55,000 people or something, so probably half of what it is. And we played Ohio State my third year, or my third game my freshman year. And 
you could start to feel the electricity when we drove on campus from the team bus. And it was something I never forgot. And I kind of, I kind of measured every game after that to that spot, and including Super Bowls. And so when you get in that bus and you're driving and that you could feel the electricity, you could feel the energy before you ever even get to the place, yeah, that's something you could, you just feed off of it. Yeah, I think the crowd understands it and I know the players get it because when it's dead, that's, it's hard to feed off of nothing. Right. So, yeah, I, I think it's I think it's a win-win for both the fans and the players.